this is Tanner Tech, and today I'm going to show you how to build a vacuum tube triode amplifier. So for my amplifier, I decided to use this dual triode tube, even though I'm only using one of the triodes inside it. This tube is unnumbered, so I'm not quite sure what type of tube it is. So I had to look on the bottom and determine the pinout based on what I saw. After finding the pinout, I matched it to one in a vacuum tube book. The tube socket is made from one of my homemade vacuum tube sockets that you can see in the previous video. This specific tube socket is made from plexiglass. So now to the first part of the tube amplifier, the power supply. This is the AC mains voltage, 120 volts AC. This is a switch, and this is a fuse. This AC mains goes through two transformers wired in parallel. This one is a 20 volt transformer that I salvaged from a boombox. This is a 6 volt and 12 volt transformer that I found in the logic circuit board of a microwave. The 20 volt transformer goes through a rectifier and a 2000 microfarad capacitor to supply the 20 volts to the actual amplification part of the tube amplifier. This transformer from the microwave supplies the 6 volts to the filament and the 12 volts for the computer cooling fan. The filament does not need a rectifier. In the actual amplifier, this is the boombox transformer that supplies the 20 volts to the actual amplifier. And down here is the microwave logic transformer that supplies the 12 volts for the cooling fan and the 6 volts for the filament in the vacuum tube. The amplification section draws only 200 milliamps and this transformer is just fine in supplying it. But the filament draws 400 to 500 milliamps, depending on if it's hot or cold. And this microwave logic transformer can supply only 300 to 400 milliamps. When this thing event turns on, this transformer is humming a lot. But as soon as the tube is warmed up, the humming stops, because it's not drawing as much amperage. So, now to the actual amplifier section of my vacuum tube audio amplifier. So the audio comes in through whatever you play your music on, whether it be an iPod, or a Walkman, or a CD player. And it goes through a 2.2 microfarad film capacitor, and please note that it needs to be a film capacitor, which goes to the grid of the vacuum tube. This vacuum tube can be almost any vacuum, almost any triode vacuum tube. Now I've tried about five different triode vacuum tubes, and this one seemed to work the best. This vacuum tube acts as the to filter out any DC voltages. The LM317 is used as a current limiter. The speaker you use can be just about any speaker. Because we're using a MOSFET for the output stage, we don't have to worry too much about electrical impedance. So, particularly, I used an 8 ohm speaker, but a 16 ohm, or a 4 ohm, or any speaker will work. This is the circuit board inside of the enclosure. I regret not taking any footage 
of the circuit board before I mounted it inside the enclosure. But this is going to have to do for now. The LM317 current limiter and the MOSFET tend to get hot, so I added a large heatsink from a TV and a cooling fan from a computer. This keeps them cool, and I can run my amplifier for as long as I want without it overheating. When I was first experimenting with different tubes and MOSFETs, I used this breadboard to hook up all my components. Now they're all soldered onto one of these perf boards. For the enclosure, I use these wood planks, which serve very well. I didn't see any need to put an extra volume knob on this, because you can just use the volume knob on your sound producing device. So, now to test it. I'm going to be playing a song on my Walkman. And I'm going to have it playing as the tube warms up, so you can hear the difference between a hot filament and a cold filament. So, the transformer is humming and the tube is heating up. You can hear it takes about 15 seconds for the tube to heat up, but once it has, it is extremely loud. As you can see, the amplifier works very well. As usual, thank you for watching, and please subscribe.